I went to drama school at RADA and uh, in my second year we were directed by Bill Gaskell. And I think that was my initial introduction to what the Royal Court meant, which was quite scary, because Bill Gaskell is quite scary. But it was sort of a challenge. It sounded like this was where really dynamic, challenging work was taking place, and uh, you really had to step up to the plate. Then, during drama school, I went, I came to the Royal Court a couple of times, and I came, I've, I'm from Bath originally, and we have the Theatre Royal Bath, which is very lovely and all the rest of it, but you know, it is a touring theatre, commercial theatre. So it wasn't the most challenging kind of um, material that I was being introduced to, although we saw lots of other sorts of stuff. So drama school was really my introduction into how far you can go with, with language and playwriting. And um, I saw Cal Churchill's A Number with Daniel Craig and Gambon, which completely blew me away. And um, I, I feel, because when I was thinking about this, I realised, God, Carol Churchill keeps coming up, you know, a woman, and she's still here, she's still at it. She's still and she's, she's still writing, and she's still surprising. And, and the idea of form being something that you play with, it's not linear narrative, that completely blew me away. It was more like practically poetry, I mean, specifically Carol Churchill, I suppose. And also their mojo. Um, Patrick Marber, you know, and that was just like, wow, it's so funny, it's so daring, it's so dark. Uh, that was another privilege, that was my first big part, you know. I've had two of my first big parts here, so I feel like it's home. This is, like I say, it's like a school. I feel like it's a work environment. I know that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Of course it's a work environment, but it's a, stu it's a, stu a studying, a place of study, I feel. It's continual study, um, a continual place of learning, and that's what's... I love. I remember, because when I first came doing um, The Country, the Martin Crimp play, working with Katie Mitchell, that was pretty amazing. Um, the smell of the leather, because it had just been re <laughs> refurbished. That was extraordinary. And then also on the vertical hour, um, that moment, you know, of um, having to, beginners standing behind the gauze, listening to the audience, having my back to the audience. They were behind me. And then this, I get locked in by this piece of gauze that comes in front of me and I'm trapped and there's nowhere for me to go. The music's going to start, the front curtain's going to go up. I've got nowhere to run. That was really fun. But also, um, Anton Lesser was in that, in the Vertical Hour. And, um, and it was the most comfortable, it was the first time I've ever been that free and comfortable on stage, where we had to talk quite a lot, you know. And um, huge, great monologues, quite political, quite difficult ideas. And both of us had a couple of moments of drying. And it was really nice. It was like the first time I went, drying is okay. Because we trusted each other implicitly and we felt really comfortable on that stage. I take part in the Act for Change thing to get more diversity in TV and theatre and blah, blah, blah. And I think the court has always been doing that, you know, because of the international playwriting um, season. And also, it's not about cultural tourism, you know, it's really not about that. It's not about, oh, let's, let's hear about how the Taiwanese, um, what their sort of front room dramas are like. It's not like that, it's about, it's politics, it's, I don't know, it's everything, and I think that's really exciting. I've already touched on a little of what I think makes the Royal Court so important, is it feels so alive. It feels uncynical. It feels like it really is about the work and about um, nurturing. I bet you're going to hear that word a lot. Um, you know, nurturing unheard voices and challenging those that we already know um, to, to develop whatever ideas they have. But also, I think it, they risk-take here. You know, it's, it's non-commercial. There's a lot of stuff here that you wouldn't... You wouldn't, it would never get seen in commercial theatre, you know. I mean, they used to have this reading. I'm sure they still have it in various forms, but they have this reading, um, these sessions, where on a weekly, I think it was weekly or fortnightly, we would come in and read. And I did it for, I suppose, a term or six months, something like that. And I was the only actor doing it, so it felt, what a privilege. And um, there was Ian Ricks and there was, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Emily McLaughlin on it, and um, Terry Johnson, Max Stafford Clark. It was this very small, intimate little reading group, and every week we'd go away with various plays, 
we'd write our notes and we'd come back and we'd discuss these plays. Should they go on upstairs? Should they go on downstairs? Should they meet the writer? Um, or is it a reject? You know, um, and I just, I, I am not an intellectual. I am, I find it really difficult to articulate um, anything about plays. I don't, I don't really understand it. It's all instinct. But I, I felt, and there were people there who really are academic and they understand literary criticism and all the rest of it and what makes a good play. But the fact that they, I was party to this and that actually instinct, creative instinct was respect. I don't know, respect is a bit highfalutin, I think. It is, gives it too much credence. But the fact that they allowed me to be there or wanted me to be there and give my opinion was unbelievably empowering. And, and I, that, to me, is incredible. That, I think the court does that. That was my experience of the court, but I think it does that with, uh, with its writers, its directors, and its actors, you know. And I think that's amazing. And so I, I think it starts there, where this grain of an idea is shared around with different people. It's not one person who makes all the, the choices and the decisions. It's really shared. It's democratic, I think. If the Royal Court didn't exist, I wouldn't trust that new writers would be heard.